Hey everyone, welcome here with uh, RC Together at the Scale Compound. Installing metal gears in our transmission in our SCX10 today. So, got our chief mechanic removing the drive shafts from the front and rear of the transmission. Uh, first step, as you can see, got the chassis removed to the wheels and the body here for easy access. Uh, once we get that drive shaft, looks like you just pop the rear off there and uh, is going to flip it over and remove the four screws from the transmission. So that will be two closer to the center and then two that are off to the side. Those four screws hold the transmission in place. So once you have the drive shafts removed, pull those four screws out and set those aside. Make sure we don't misplace anything you could see the transmission drop right there. So now that we have the transmission out, kind of make sure we have all of our hardware that we need. And we'll just take the chassis and pretty much set it aside for now. We won't need that at this point. See so the drive shaft fall, fell off there. Uh, he's gonna go ahead and just put that back in place just for the time being. Those uh, HD wild boar shafts, uh, the newer style, uh, we can talk a little bit more about those later when we're putting them back together. So at this point, he's going to go ahead and start pulling apart the transmission. And what I'd like to do is show you guys what the idler gear looks like. So here is a quick glimpse of the metal idler gear that we'll be replacing uh, the plastic one with. Very simple. Notice it does not have the bearings in there. Uh, we're going to use the bearings out of the one in that transmission. This is a fairly new and hardly used SCX10 deadbolt chassis. So it, it, the bearings are, are pretty much brand new so inside the transmission. So there's no need for us to worry about uh, getting new bearings at this point in time. And when we do get to that point, we'll likely use some some Fast Eddie's bearings. Uh, definitely good product out there. If you guys are looking for bearings, uh, check them out, Fast Eddie's bearings. So it looks like he's got the screws coming out here. And go ahead and pull the transmission apart. So you can see the, uh, looks like the, idler gear he's got right here and pull that pin out of the middle of the idler gear and now at this point he's going to remove the bearings from the idler gear now kind of want to be careful looks like he might have dropped one on the floor it happens um, but that's where these two bearings should be one on either side will come in handy for our, our new idler gear that we're replacing so at this point he's got the diff gear in his hand here and with the diff gear, I'm going to remove the screws from the, the outputs and go ahead and get those uh, freed up so we can remount those outputs onto the metal diff gear. And there we go. Here's the one side and the other side. So. These are the two uh, plastic gears that will be replaced. The one on the right, the smaller one, which is the idler gear, will strip very easily, and it's definitely the weaker point of the transmission. So you can see the uh, Robinson Racing uh, diff gear and idler gear now, the metal gears that we're actually going to be using. Um, just showing those right here. We kind of get a little close up so you guys can see. These are steel and are not going to fail uh, as the plastic ones would. So instead of, as I've done in the past, which is pretty much run it until it breaks, then replace it. I'm being a little bit more proactive with this rig and um, getting our mechanics help in replacing these before they actually stripped out. So he's dropping the idler gear in and get that into the transmission. So let's go ahead and get the bottom diff gear in. Use a little blue Loctite on the outputs for the 
bottom diff gear to ensure since we're using metal on metal we don't get anything uh, backing out there the hardware we don't want it to be loose putting a lot of power through the transmission eventually so we want it to stay together nice for us go ahead and speed this up a little bit since there's a little bit of uh, redundancy here a little monotonous and uh, as he goes ahead and gets this put together here again uh, using Loctite on all three screws making sure we get those holes lined up nice uh, we will give you a look at the final product here and it should look uh, similar to this uh, once it's complete so you can see the diff gear there notice uh, no bearings on it uh, at this point the bearings are still in the case so now that we got the diff put together we're going to apply some grease to really for multiple reasons here we want to provide some lubrication for these new metal gears that we're putting into the transmission um, will help as well keeping a little bit of the noise down sometimes the metal gears can get a little louder than the plastic ones although they're much sturdier uh, we don't want any additional noise so it'll help a little bit with that too another reason uh, the grease is a good idea is to help prevent any damage that could be caused by any moisture buildup so that grease is not only going to help the steel of the gear itself but the the bearings within the transmission should any moisture buildup occur or if any moisture creeps into that transmission try not to run in too deep of uh, water anymore after really um, you know, doing a lot of damage to some earlier rigs that we ran and this will will just give us a little extra help in case some gets in there so here's the transmission uh, before we put the other side on you can see the gears lined up quite nicely they're all metal gears at this point uh, see the idler right there in the center and the diff gear on the left um, stock axial 27 turn can there and we'll go ahead and now place the other side of the transmission casing back on just want to make sure we line up the bolts with the holes here and feel that kind of snap together we want to feel that snap and see that the, the seams are fully closed there we go before we start running the bolts back into the transmission casing so as he drives these in and work to get that lined up just right you're going to notice that there are the majority of the bolts here are just driven right in you want to make sure to tighten them down uh, fairly snug but not take care not to over tighten them and then there will be a final bolt that will be driven in that will actually require a nut on the end of it so I believe that one is going to be coming up here um, there we go so we want to kind of pay attention to these as you take them apart as well so you know which ones uh, are in the proper position there so grab your hex driver or something to hold that nut in place while you drive in the final bolt and you should have your transmission case fully put back together at this point so I just want to make a quick note on the wild boar HD drive shafts it's actually tick marks on the female there you can see right there and the male dual-sided male end you want to line those tick marks up on both the females and the male and the reason I know this it was very hard to find a post on this but I did stumble across one I had um, the new SCX 10 was had a really bad wobble in the front end and all I had done was drop a drive shaft and uh, put it back together so I knew something was really off there and I think we'll is if we can um, zoom back in here and show you again you can notice the tick marks on all three pieces 
Now they may not line up I you know identically, but if you look here, try to get a little light on that for you, you can see the tick mark there and there. Uh, and they should line up and again on the other side too very small very subtle thing um, if if not if you don't have those lined up they will be out of phase and give you a wobble so if you ever notice a wobble you may want to check that so on to the transmission being placed back into the vehicle we're going to attach the drive shafts to the transmission and get the transmission case mounted back to the chassis. Now you could mount the transmission first and then attach the drive shafts. It's really a matter of preference here. Um, doing it in this manner you can manipulate the transmission freely to get the, the drive shafts on. It may make it a little bit easier for you. So our uh, chief mechanic here is in this case preferring to go ahead and attach the drive shafts first and then bolt down the transmission so uh, again matter of preference so once we got the drive shafts attached flipping the rig belly side up and we got some screws here uh, want to pay attention to the size of the screws two of the screws are longer and those will go in the center where he had just placed those and then there's two shorter screws which will actually come out on the two holes in the side closer to the side rather so want to make sure you get those lined up properly no need for Loctite here metal into plastic uh, tightening those down uh, nicely uh, and just barely snug initially to get them all four ran into their uh, proper place and then you notice it'll kind of come back and give them just a little extra uh, torque to make sure that they're in place nice and tight. And there we go.